appreciated assets struggle with most owners of highly appreciated assets struggle with capital gains tax when they go to sell their business, primary home, or investment real estate. We use the Deferred Sales Trust to give them tax deferral, liquidity, diversification, and the freedom to purchase investment real estate at optimal timing, all tax deferred, so they can create and preserve more wealth. Does high capital gains tax or the pressure of the 1031 exchange keep you from selling your commercial real estate? primary home or business? If the answer is yes, then you should consider a Deferred Sales Trust, or DST. For over 24 years, the DST has been a legal, proven, and tested exit strategy. 1031 Exchange Alternative, or Rescue for a Failing 1031 Exchange. What is it, and how does it work? The DST is a specialized installment sale, whereby you sell your asset to a trust unrelated to you in exchange for a secured installment note. The trust then simultaneously sells your asset to your designated buyer, receiving the sales proceeds, allowing you to avoid actual or constructive receipt, and instead defer the obligation to pay taxes at the time of sale. You then specify the amount and timing of payments you wish to receive and benefit by paying tax over a longer period of time, giving you extra wealth to live off of. You only pay taxes on the payments you receive each year. The funds can be held in cash or invested into any other type of commercial real estate stocks, bonds, insurance, mutual fund investments suited to your customized risk profile and financial goals. I'm Brett Swartz, founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. I understand that you may want to be relieved of the stress and liability that comes with managing your asset you're selling. We have a solution for that here at Capital Gains Tax Solutions and can help you create an optimal timing wealth plan and escape feeling trapped by capital gains tax. Through a deferred sales trust, you can now trade the toilets, trash, employees, and liability for the benefits of a passive, flexible payment option, a diversified portfolio of real estate or securities to minimize risk, option to invest in another business or give to charitable causes. I understand this feels complicated, but life is too short to feel trapped by assets you're ready to sell, don't you think? Get started with a wealth plan today. Book a call today by going to Capital Gains Tax Solutions dot com or call Brett at 916-886-2986. To All right, everybody. Hey, welcome to a, another mastermind here, uh, Capital Gains Tax Solutions. We're excited to have everybody as a part of our um, kickoff for probably I think our week number 10 or 12 now. I'm kind of losing track. It's been exciting. We're talking about how do I hold off Capital Gains tax um, on the sale of Bitcoin profits or Bitcoin profits. That is the topic today and most all weeks as well as making all things deferred sales trust simple. Um, and if you didn't hear in the video, I'm founder of Capital Gains Tax Solutions. I got a podcast, I got a YouTube videos, and I also have a bunch of strategic partners who are actually on the line now, realtors, financial advisors, um, business brokers, M&A folks that join us every single week. And um, again, our goal is to make all things deferred sales trust simple and also helping you defer tax for yourself or for your clients. Again, cryptocurrency, primary homes, real estate, so you can create and preserve more wealth or help your clients do the same. So there's kind of three segments we try to cover in every single mastermind. We try to keep it to about 30 minutes, and then we also have a Q&A as well, so that can be a little bit, a little bit more or less there. But the first part is just talking about the vision. The second part is talking about the deal close story of the week. And the third thing is breaking down the cryptocurrency part of this because that uh, is a new frontier for us with the Deferred Sales Trust. However, we've already closed now three of these and I'm excited to talk about the, the newest one here in a minute. But I'm joined by one of my uh, business partners and co-host, Pierce York. Pierce, how are you doing today? Super well. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. How is the beautiful Southern California these days? You're in, are, are you calling from the beach or the suburbs or where are you today? I'm in the suburbs today. Um, I'll be going down to the beach uh, a little bit later to actually check out a, um, a warehouse space. So that'll be interesting. Industrial, huh? Amazon, they're just shipping, shipping, trying to ship windows to people, right? As fast as they can. <laughs> Doing something. Yeah. There's a window shortage. Rebecca has a window shortage of one of her houses that she's she's just telling me about. I was just in Florida, and there's literally all these houses that are built up, 
and they're sitting there like ready to go and there's just paper over the windows like just stacks of like brand new houses and like everything is just held off so rebecca what, what uh, also one of our strategic alliances and partners up in in the tahoe uh truckee area what are you seeing up there with this window shutters uh, rebecca uh, a lot of what you're seeing in uh florida as well um, a lot of homes that are being wrapped completely um, and just waiting for those windows fingers mm -hmm. crossed that it isn't four or five months out uh, but it sounds like it's definitely a problem across the country. It is. And now there's rain like the first time in a long time. I don't know if you're getting up in Truckee. I'm in Sacramento. But it was raining for like maybe 12 or 14 hours straight. I'm like, wow, the skies have opened up. So maybe the snow is maybe potentially coming here shortly. What do you think, Rebecca? I think we're going to get a lot of snow. Yeah. And a lot of rain. Um, I love it. We need Excellent. it so bad. Excellent. And glad to see Roman here and Nico here and, and, and Mike Waters for the second time as well. Welcome as well. So let's dive right into the vision and then we'll start, uh, we'll do the deal close story and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dive into crypto even more so here. So again, the vision is to connect all things cryptocurrency, commercial real estate, traditional investing using what's called the deferred sales trust, right? And this is how you can hold off uh, paying capital gains tax on the sale of your Bitcoin profits or other cryptocurrency. In fact, we've done it with Bitcoin. We've done it with Ethereum. We've done it. We're working on a huge NFT deal right now and um, uh, working on an XRP deal. But we've done it already with also primary homes, luxury, big homes, an $8.3 million deal in Palo Alto. We've done it with business sales out of Alabama, $2.6 million. Colorado, $5 million multifamily complex. Uh, we've done it with um, a dental practices, veterinarian practices, just about anything you can think about, car dealerships. Um, there was actually some Netflix Flix original team members that were able to do it for their public stock. Okay, so just about anything that's highly appreciated, the Deferred Sales Trust works for by doing what's called an installment sale, carrying back paper and transferring it in a way and in a process that allows you to defer the tax, kind of like an IRA, kind of like a 401k. But traditionally speaking, the DST connected with the real estate and business world has been kind of tried and true, but now with crypto and the and the and the and the values that we're seeing, there's a lot of folks that we're working with that want to diversify, want to to sell their gains high, and want to be able to invest into cryptocurrency at a lower price at a different time period, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Invest into commercial real estate, put some put some in a new business venture. Okay, all tax deferred. Right. And that's the key that the DST is the tool to connect these these worlds together. And also as a part of that, I'm a commercial real estate expert and I and I align myself with an amazing luxury realtors, financial advisors, business brokers, m &A attorneys to help bring a team I like to say an executive dream team to help you build your wealth, start your next business, buy your next piece of real estate, sell your piece of real estate. Whatever you need, we want to connect and we want to bring in the best business professionals. But using the DST is that thing that kind of kind of unlocks these things, right? Because if you have a bunch of tax to pay, you may not sell, right? Or if you don't know um, how to buy a piece of real estate tax deferred, you may not buy. So all of these things are amazing, a part of the Deferred Sales Trust. Pierce, anything else to add to that vision on, on what you're hoping to get folks to get out of uh, today's, uh, today's mastermind? He's working on his mute button. There you go. <laughs> the, mute, the mute button always, always gets you. Um, yeah, I think, I think you, you pretty much nailed it. Um, you know, and, and, you know, using that for, for vendors to leverage in order to secure more deals too, not just for the people who, you know, it's helping, but also for, you know, the, I guess the sales agents out there too. Um, that's a, that's a big leg up. And if you can explain it and, and, you know, kind of get that idea across that, Hey, look, like you can save so much money and this is such a powerful tool. You know, it, it really can, it can set you apart. Absolutely. And you're a luxury realtor and, and working on some commercial real estate deals in Southern California, by the way, too. Are you working on that industrial deal, Pierce? I'm curious. Uh, you got that meeting with that, with that potential seller. Did you talk to deferred sales trust or talk about that one a little bit? Yeah. So, um, so this lady bought this, um, a 12,000 square foot industrial space and um, about 1977, 1978 for like 500 and like 60 grand. They probably put a million, million and a half high estimate into it. 
So they might be in it for, for about two, but it they're selling it right now for five. So they're 80 years old. They've fully depreciated it. It, uh, they built it out to be an analytics lab where they would test things like, uh, drugs and, and whatnot, just to ensure that the, uh, you know, ingredients were the ingredients. Um, and they ran that for forever. And, um, you know, that it's a, you know, they're hard nosed and she kind of wants to, you know, sell it herself, but she's willing to give a commission if we bring a buyer, but they love the building and they don't want to just, you know, sell it to whoever. She doesn't want to lease it out to any of the cannabis people. She doesn't want to, like, she, she really wants to, you know, that was like their baby, their thing. And we were talking and I was, you know, trying to, you know, in my head, when I saw it, I was like, this is a fat, like capital gains tax. And, and you know, she's like, I want to hit, you know, 5 million. That's my number. And she, she's thinking she get, I'm like, well, what are you going to do? She's like, well, I don't want a 1031 and do another building. I can tell you that I'm 80 years old and I want to, I'm done. Like we're tired. And so I was just like, I was like, Mary, like, this is, you are textbook deferred sales trust. I'm like right now, like, this is a perfect deal for you. Um, and so I spoke with her again yesterday and got some more of the, uh, the facts on that. So I'm just, I'm working. She said that, um, you know, she liked how I was upfront and honest with her about stuff. And, and, you know, um, this is, this is a great, if I can get her to understand that if she doesn't do it, ten, or, uh, either a 1031 or a deferred sales trust, she's going to pay almost probably close to a million dollars in tax. I'd say more you like know? two, right? If your basis is zero and she's selling at five million in California, right? 30 to 50% of the gain. So on five million, I'm going to expect 40%. I'm going to say two million in minimum. Yeah, something like that. Depending upon, yeah, if she's depreciated all, but her improvements were a million and a half. So if she's depreciated that, like, yeah, it's, it's, hmm. it's a significant tax flow to them. And, you know, they're, they're at that age where they just need as much like cash as they can in a, in a really conservative investment, which will just pay them pretty much for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So if I could get her to see that, then I, then that will be really good. Beautiful. I love that. And so a couple things to point out commercial property depreciates over 39 years, right? So since this is an industrial property, it's 39. If it were a, a multifamily property, it'd be 27 and a half years. And then Pierce is exactly right. Your basis is plus the improvement. So what you bought it for plus improvements minus depreciation. So the key thing would be say, hey, how much did you purchase it for? How much have you improved it? And when did you make those improvements as well, right? And then look at your yeah. actual depreciation schedule. Have they taken what's called accelerated depreciation? Okay, these are these are all the things. But the key is just ask your CPA peers to be like, hey, you probably have a depreciation yeah. schedule. Your CPA's done it. We just see where that's at. Then let's find the number. But even if it's a million dollars, right? You know, that's still a lot. And you yeah. can defer it and make sense of it. Remember, our minimum is a million dollar net proceeds and a million dollar gain. And so, and I also love how you said it's perfect for her when she's 80 years old, right? She's 80 and and she's looking for she's looking for um, simplicity. She's looking to retire perhaps even relocate all of these things. And sometimes that cap gains tax can, and she might even say she needs 5 million, right? That's her number, but she might be calculating that before tax or after tax. Yeah. So maybe the deal is only worth 4 million, right? But now she can net the same with the DST that might take her a year or right. two to hold on. So this is where the DST provides transformation because it gives people's time back, right? There's a deal that happened for a financial advisor. His name is Cal. And he worked for 35 years in, in, in Los Angeles as a financial advisor for LPL advisors. And his biggest thing was, hey, my business is worth about X, multi-million dollars. I needed to get it to Y after tax to net what I need to, to, to retire. But if I can use the DST today, that saves me 10 years, right? That's transformational. He moved, he did this deal 15 years ago, the DST, moved out of state, moved in the Midwest, and he's, he's loved it. But it's that time piece that's powerful. It's just not the tax savings. So um, that being said, uh, let's move into the deal close story of the week. And I'm really excited about this one. And I'm going to try to paint the picture for you. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a gal who's in her 20s who bought Bitcoin at a very, very uh, early, early adoption phase, somewhere for around fourteen to $20,000 dollars. Um, uh, it was what her total amount in, but a very, but, but the 
I want to, I don't know the exact number, except it was pretty much close to zero, right? When she bought it and it literally went to $50 million. Okay. And so about a month ago, she watched one of these masterminds and, and, and said, I, over the last, last 48 hours, we couldn't stop watching all of your content and all learning all about the deferred sales trust. And we've been trying to solve this because I have never sold one Bitcoin. In fact, she goes, well, actually, that's actually wrong. I, I bought it the first day. The next day it lost like eight or 10% and I, I, I sold it. It was a very small part, but then I bought back in a couple days later and then I have never sold since. Okay. And she just slowly kept buying and buying and buying and buying and never sold because of part of, because of the capital gains tax. But the other part of it was she wanted to be able to retire from the corporate W2 Google, Google, Google job. Right. And she wanted to start another potential business and do some other things. And so for her, she's living in California, high capital gains tax. She found us and she goes, look, I have an outcome for the funds. I don't want to just sell it to sell it to defer the tax. I have a place that it helps provide some transformation for myself. And actually her business partner was uh, like, they knew each other in college and um, were close friends and, and continued, um, continued being close friends. So he had the business idea. She liked the idea and guess what? They were able to sell 5 million to start. Okay. 5 million. So it actually basically matches our, our last, our first DST crypto deal, which was Ethereum with Bitcoin that happened about 90 days ago. And that was 5 million. Okay. So, so she started now it's interesting. They did both did 5 million and part of why she did 5 million cause she's single. And if we remember with the DST, um, IRC 453, 5 million per, per person per year on the DST call that regular. Okay. Anything above and beyond that would be subject to an interest rate. So this first 5 million, although she needed about 6.3 million, this first 5 million is at a 0% uh, interest charge from the government. And, and also, uh, so it's been about from the time we first talked to now, it's been about 30 days and we closed it as of about, uh, about a week ago. Um, so in between that process, she also had to overcome, of course, is it legal? Does it work? What's the track record, the security of the transfer? She had it in a cold storage. We had a Kraken account opened up. We were able to show her the two FA codes to make sure everything was seamless there and transparent. She talked with the bank, um, high level of due diligence, uh, very sophisticated and smart. Um, but she got comfortable with it and we just closed. So I'm going to pause there. Pierce, anything, or actually Mike, I'm going to bring Mike in here. Mike's uh, in the crypto and the real estate world. Mike, can you introduce yourself where you're from? And then I want you to ask any questions so far about that deal. Uh, Michael Waters from uh, sunny Salt Lake City. Actually, it's rainy and snowy Salt Lake City today, but normally it's sunny Salt Lake City. Um, with Quest Crypto, we're uh, real estate backed crypto currency. And uh, we specialize in um, <clears throat> tokenizing properties so that it's a one for one, like, like, like for like trade in real estate. And we lock the equity into a permanent, uh, each property's individualized blockchain, has an individual blockchain on it. Incredible. Um, and on that deal, Brett, that's interesting because if she wants to buy a home, I'm very curious if she wants to buy a home, because we can escrow that for her so that she can take it out. And in fact, like in a REIT format, in a 731 format, you can roll these funds um, through crypto without even any tax consequences, as I'm aware of the current tax code. Um, but anybody that wants to actually buy a house for Bitcoin, you're, you're smart. I, hear, I see a lot of people saying, I'm buying a house with Bitcoin. What they did was they sold their Bitcoin and bought a house. And that's a completely different transaction, as you, as you understand, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most people don't understand that. That is a 100%. And if you're in California where you have a 50% capital gains rate, you're going to pay 50% on what you bought that home for and then be subject to another 50% on what you bought the home on your basis from when you sell the house in California. So, I mean, that's almost 100% if you do it wrong. So it's just, you got to do it right. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple things, right? So yeah, so she's not buying a house, right? She's investing into real estate. Now, she could she also invest into investment properties, a house? Yeah. yeah. As long as she's mm -hmm. not personally living it. So there's kind of a there's kind of a, a, a layer, you will, like the IRS will say, hey, as long as you do it for business purpose and you're doing this for something that's going to spur economic growth, that's not just personal use 
it could be a, it could be a personal business. That's cool because that spurs economic growth. There's tax revenue there, but it crosses the line when it goes personal. So to clarify, she could buy a house. She's not buying a house, but if she were going to buy a personal house, then you're right. On our structure, our strategy, she would pay the tax for that amount. Now we would recommend just putting the for a down payment. Let's say she's buying a million dollar house and she's going to put two hundred thousand dollars down. Um, and for our structure, she would just take the two hundred as a as a distribution. She'd put that as a down payment and she'd buy a million dollar house and she'd get debt on that. Um, on her scenario, she doesn't want to buy a house. She's good. She's good with. Uh, uh, in fact, I think she already has a house. She already has a condo. She's just good there. For her, it's simply the business venture opportunity to go into the deal. One other thing too, if you own investment real estate in California, you're somewhere between 30 and 50% in capital gains tax and depreciation recapture if it's an investment property. If it's a primary home right now, as it's 20% federal and then about 13.3% uh, state. So it's about 33% for California. So it's a little bit lighter, but it's still a lot. I mean, 30 or 50, Mike, it's still really high. Right, so you want to be you want to be um, you know aware of that. However, if you live in a primary home to the last five years, you have what's called the 121 exclusion, which states that if you're married, it's five hundred thousand dollars tax free on the gain, or two fifty if you're single. So let's just say you bought a property for a million, and you lived there for exactly a year or exactly two years, and the value goes to two million. If you were married, you'd have a five hundred thousand dollar exclusion. So your 1 million goes to 1.5, so you're excluded there. So you only have tax on that 500 above that, which would be at 33% of that 500, okay? Unless you did a deferred sales trust and rolled all the funds in there. So that's a lot of if, thens, if, thens, but just realize most people don't wanna pay the tax, whether it's 30 or 50, and you wanna be aware of, of your options there. Mike, any questions or, or, or thoughts on that? No, I just, I, I mean, you're exactly right, and, and I love how, uh, I love how you thorough your system is because it's really well thought out. And uh, the more I read about it, the more interested I get, and the more I realize that you can also do tokens. You can take your tokens, sell your tokens, or you can leverage the tokens and use that money and use the leverage sale over time. I mean, there's so many fun games you can play with it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of money in Bitcoin. And uh, when that message gets out, what you're talking about, and the ability to buy real estate. By the way, that the one thing that I like about what we do in particular is when you tokenize the property, you can be the possessor of your tokens uh, on a property. You don't have to sell them, but you can be the possessor of your tokens and then you can use those tokens to go into other projects. And so, Mike and I, by the way, are going to be doing a webinar on that to, to, to dive into the details on that coming up in the next 30 days or so. So look for that. I'm also, I, uh, I think I had Mike on my podcast. Mike, you were on. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, weeks ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look for that. We're going to be, we're going to, we're, op we're opening up the world of, of cryptocurrency investing in different ways. And Mike has a really unique, cool way. So that hey, means if I can real quick, I, I, I haven't been able to make it public up until now. Um, we are now going to be the sole and exclusive funder of the all Net arena in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. That is an $8 billion project. Um, Quest crypto is going to finance that. We're not going to do any banks. It's going to be done as a public offering. The uh, There's an ex-NBA star named Jackie Robinson who owns the project. Not the baseball player. He's dead. Uh, his grandson, Jackie Robinson uh, of the NBA, Detroit Pistons, Chicago Bulls. He's got the project. It's on 27 acres, three hotels, conference center. Oh, That'll be the webinar mall. right there, Mike. That'll be the yeah, webinar. And, and the whole thing is going to be done via a crypto offering. We're just going right. straight to there, avoiding the banks. Very cool. Very cool. So, so very cool. And we'll do the webinar on that too. So, so again, uh, this particular, uh, client of, of ours, she just sold right now. She's going into the business venture. She, um, and then what's really kind of, really kind of cool, um, uh, Bitcoin, as you didn't see this week, hit all time highs it's, as well as Ethereum. And so from the time she sold, right. And she had the other 45 million, that's even gone up. She, she may have even made up for that as well. You know, you can't time this thing perfect. She sold at 54,000. I think it got as high as 66. I'm not even sure where it's at this morning. Maybe it dropped back down a little bit. 61. 61, yeah. Okay. But she right sold at 54 was her number. And by the way, at the time when we first started talking, we were like at 44, right? And so the thought was like, hey, this is probably going to take, you know, a month, two, three, four, like who knows, like kind of out there. So we got everything set up. We got everything prepared. We did the first transfer of like a dollar, uh, you know, a point, 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 whatever, 
a, a worth of Bitcoin over just to see the accounts connect, make sure it's all safe. And then we were like, okay, fine. Well, I'll talk to you in a couple months, whatever, right? Like talk to me when, when it gets to your, to the number. But all of a sudden, you know, it was like a, within a week, it was like, oh my gosh, this is going crazy. And then she's like, okay, ready to go. And boom. So then we transferred 5 million within like 20 minutes, right? It actually took about 40 minutes officially. We're on the Zoom and we kept the Zoom room open and we, we were doing it. We're walking through it. We're like, okay, there it is. And then, and then it says it's processing, right? And you're like, just watching. You're like, okay. She's like, okay, this always takes about, you know, 40, 50 minutes. So let's just all come back on the, on the Zoom in about 40 minutes. So I just put a timer on my phone and it's a Sunday too, which is kind of funny. I usually don't work on Sundays, right? So I'm just hanging out. We're like, oh, I'll just come back. And so we came back and sure enough, it had all processed. It was all there. I was like, perfect. There it is. And then we transferred the wire the next day. And then I think by, by Monday afternoon, the, the, all the funds were at the bank account. And uh, so here we are. So uh, she's excited. We're excited. She's already planning doing to do 1.6 million January 1st. And part of that is getting it into the new year, right? Because each year, each single individual can do 5 million. Now, if you say, well, Brett, what if I have 50 million? She wants to sell it all tomorrow, right? Or I have 100 million. We have a new, a new uh, Jake Miller and I, are, and he's, he's on the line. He might be in an airport. But we have an, also a new uh, potential client that uh, Pierce and also Rebecca, if you get to Vegas, you'll be able to meet him. Uh, he's going to be attending the conference with us. But he had NFTs into the, um, let's just say, a couple hundred million dollars, okay? And so for him, he's learning about the DST. He's going to start with a small amount likely here. Um, but um, the, uh, uh, what was my point of all that? That um, Luna, uh, the, uh, the, the person who's, who has that, that money there is looking at the DST for the first time. And, oh, and wanted to know like the process of how, of how this is all going to transfer. Right. And so the part of why we're sharing these intimate details of how, how, how we're doing this, right. Is so that we're prepared in advance because you never know how quickly those numbers are going to go up, especially in the crypto world. And you want to set a target. And that was the first key with both of my, DST clients right now is we set a target for the exit and a certain price, right? And they already knew what the outcome of it was going to be, where it was going to be, right? And so they knew that and we just executed on that plan versus just kind of floating around and guessing. It was an exact amount. It was mathematical. It was all broken down with the fees and everything else. Oh, and here's my other thought on that too. Could she have done the 50 million? Yeah, she could have. Okay. She didn't want to, right? Cause she didn't have an outcome for the 50 million. She had an outcome for 6.3 million, which so, so, but we, she could only do five in one year on the DST regular, but on the DST plus there's no, there's no limit. And so the gentleman we're working with now who has literally a couple hundred million dollars. Okay. He could sell it all tomorrow into the DST plus. Okay. Where there's no limit defer all the tax, but here's the other th cool thing too. He can also move it outside of his taxable estate, okay? And so this is powerful because it's gonna save his estate 40%, not only on the amount that he moves out, but also on all of the growth. And guess what? This guy's in his mid thirties, okay? So what we're talking about, Jake Miller and I are going through this, this, wealth, this wealth plan with him is look, you've been able to do amazing here. Why don't you take a big amount off the table, start investing in commercial real estate, start to diversify, start to hedge, and then, oh, by the way, can you partner with the trust and go back and buy more crypto at a discount? And the answer is yes. Okay. You can do that too. It can be invested back into crypto, back into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, insurance, commercial real estate, hard money lending, ground up development. It's really like open source. Now, do we have to have some um, of diversification within the concentration of the assets? Yeah. Can we put all of it back into crypto? No right? There's got to be some diversification, partly because it's, it's the trust's job to pay you back a rate of return, typically 8% over a 10 year period of time. And then you can renew every 10 years for 10 years, but we don't want to take too much risk on the trust, but can we take a percentage of that, you know, maybe five, 10, 15 or 20 based upon your risk tolerance and go back and buy, you know, crypto at a discount and then do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah, you can. It's it's an, it's a, it's it's the flexibility of the deferred sales trust. So, Pierce, I'm going to pause there. See if you have any questions or thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, the uh, the percent that you're talking about over the five million. Can you dive into that a little bit? 
Yeah. So if she was do the DST regular, let's <clears> imagine <throat> she, she is single, right? So it's 5 million per person per year. So this is, let's call it DST 1.0. Okay. She, if she were to do like 6 million on that extra million that's over and above in the single given tax year of 2021, it would be about 2%. The IRS has a rate for that. Okay. Imagine she were married, then there would be an, an additional 5 million. So it'd be 10 million that wouldn't be subject to that. So that first 5 million is 0%. The government's charging a zero interest loan. She goes, hey, you owe us the tax on that, but it's at 0%, okay? And that scenario, I think it was around 30%, so 30% of 5 million, because her basis was basically zero. So it's about 1.5 million she's deferring. So does that make sense on that first piece there? Is this Is this new? No, it's always been there. If you look up IRC 453 as the tax code, it'll say, hey, there's an interest charge for amounts over 5 million per person per year. And that's where we go DST 2.0 for very large deals where there's no interest charge. So it could be, it could be a billion dollar crypto sale. Wow. All of it's outside the taxable estate and there's no interest charge. It's a little bit different. There's, there's some nuances there. It's not actually IRC 453, but it is a combination of some ingredients with the DST. And these things are proprietary. You sign an NDA, right? If you have a live deal, but we don't, we don't give away those, those trade secrets, but we have a way to get that outcome. If that makes sense, Pierce. Yep. Totally. And it's been proven. That's the other thing. Like the big, the biggest thing with anything you're hearing on these strategies, you always want to ask what's the track record, right? And, and on, on that, on that ultra, ultra big deal, there was a $125 million deal done in California, Southern California, that was audited, okay, with the IRS. And it passed with flying colors. It was perfect, not a one change in in the in the uh in the audit. And so it's been tested and tried and been through the fire. So um, that is the DST 2.0. That being said, Rebecca, you have a, a deal I know you're working on that you're that you and your husband are gonna be selling, right? And you're you're a listing agent up in Truckee and Tahoe area for, for a real estate professional. By the way, congratulations, everybody. Rebecca just joined EXP as well. Can we give her a round of applause? Okay. So she's officially EXP. I'm trying to hopefully get her to Vegas here in, in, in a few weeks. And if you're hearing this, you should come to Vegas. If you're in Vegas area, come meet us November 9th through the 11th. It's like a mastermind on steroids for real estate professionals, entrepreneurs, everyone coming together. It now has M&A advisors, business brokers, commercial real estate brokers, residential agents. Everybody is uh, is welcome. And that's November 9th through the 11th. Pierce, you're going to be there, right? Maybe or unless the baby comes, right? I'm going to I'm going to do absolutely everything I possibly can to get there. I might have to drive and fly back or something. Yeah, there's know. a baby. He has he has a good he's got a yeah, he's got a he's got a, a baby on the way here. But Rebecca, back to um to that deal that you're working on with your with with your husband for the with the windows. Um yeah. give us the specs on that. Like what do you think you'll be in it for? Do you think it'll be a, a capital gains tax event there? Um it'll definitely be a capital gains tax event. I'm not sure if it'll be next year or two or three years from now. Um we'll be into it. I don't know. Cost of building keeps going up, but uh, land was two hundred twenty thousand, um, and so we'll probably be into it just under a million, is my guess, right around a million. Mm -hmm. um, today's market, it's easily worth two point five. Got it. So, so, even on with, that. so, so one million, and then two two point five, easy, right? Today's market. Yeah. So and and then um, so we take we take the two point five minus the million, so it's one point five million. It's in California. Right. Yeah. And you may or may not take any depreciation, but state is 13.3 federal is 20. Although I'm hearing it might be 25, 26, 27, 28 God. with Biden's proposal to change yeah. it. We'll see. So you have, let's just say 25 plus 13.3 yeah. plus right. the Obamacare tax of 3.8. So we're over 40. <laughs> so about, let's just call it 40. Okay. So 40 is $600,000. So, so Rebecca. It's, yeah. You're ready to sell tomorrow. Are you using a deferred sales trust for this? Are you 1031? What are you thinking you're doing? No, I'm definitely doing a deferred sales trust. And even if um, even if we live in it for two years and are able to take the, um, the $500,000, um, we'll still have the capital gains still and definitely right. do a deferred sales trust. Right. So definitely more focused on the retirement planning and um, building some wealth that way. 
So. Exactly. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Um, that being said, we are going to open up for questions from anybody right now. Uh, we have a few minutes left before we go. So we do have, uh, we have Nico, we have Susan, we have, uh, we have my other co-host Jake, but I think he's in an airport. Uh, and, uh, Mike, anyone else have questions in Roman too? I see Roman out there. Um, Adam, I see Adam. You can type him in the chat. You can also just unmute yourself and ask a question. Susan, do you have a question there? If you do, you can unmute yourself there. Yeah, I, I have some questions about, okay, so you, you said that um, I, so I'm taking a uh, real estate that was gifted to me as in, you know, as my inheritance. Uh, and I'm, I've got a lot of capital gains tax on it and I'm selling it. So if I uh, put it into a DST and then I uh, invest it in stocks and bonds, and then uh, the stocks and bonds appreciate. How does that work from a tax perspective? Like, do I only pay taxes on them when they come out of the DST and, and I distribute some to myself or to something else? How, how, does that, how does that work? In the most beautiful, elegant way that you could ever imagine as an American citizen who believes in freedom and like having not have to pay so much taxes, because the trust operates as its own entity and it's able to expense what it owes to you, even if it hasn't paid you out. So let's walk through that. Let's say you put three million into this deferred sales trust and you haven't received you're not receiving payments for a couple of years. And that three million turns into three point five million by the stock appreciation, right? Well, guess what? Your IRA might do the same thing and you're not having to pay taxes. Uh, the IRA is not having to pay taxes um, on, on, on its gains, right? The only time that you pay taxes is when you receive the payments. And that might be a couple of years from now. So it's able to grow in an efficient, elegant, tax efficient way, right? And that it's deferred and it's growing until and when it pays you out. So does that make sense? Um, yeah, but how how does it handle the fact that some of the money that goes into the DSD isn't subject to tax? Do I, first of all, do I have to put all of the money in the DST or just the amount just the amount of the capital gains? The answer is it depends on if you want to defer a hundred percent of the tax or if you want to pay some tax. So let's give an example. 3 million was, was the full amount and you're deferring hundred percent of the tax. But you say, you know what? I need an extra four or $500,000 for to buy a boat, a down payment on a primary home, have some fun, right? You're welcome to do that. So you'll pay tax on that. You know, let's say that 400,000 that you take as an initial distribution, then that other 2.6 can go into the trust. So it doesn't have to be the whole enchilada. It could be half of the enchilada, but you're going to pay tax on the other half that you, that you, that you do receive. Right. Does that make sense? Um, well, I'm still like, so, so I take that 400,000 out. Mm -hmm. um, is that like, so I owe about, I think somewhere around almost a half. No, wait, I think a third in taxes, right? Or I don't know what let's, let's say I owe a million dollars in taxes sure. on that 300 million, that 3 million. Mm -hmm. um, if I take 400,000 out, mm -hmm. do I get taxed proportionally? Or yes. I mean, how does that, how does that? Yeah, it's in proportion work? to your basis, right? So let's, 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 let's keep it simple. Let's imagine you had a zero basis and a $3 million gain and you put, would have paid a million of tax. So the way we would calculate that is we, and you say, hey, I'm taking $500,000 out, just take $500,000 by 30%, right? So it'd be $150,000 of tax. That makes sense? So it's okay. in proportion to your basis in your gain. So if I'm gonna receive 500, well, that's about 30%. If I'm gonna receive all 3 million, it's about 30%. Right? All 3 million would be a million, $500,000 would be 150. Generally speaking, check with your CPA, make sure those all match up, right? Depending on what state you live in, depending on your income, which also is interesting because you can delay the income tax, which can lower your overall tax bracket. Because some people wonder, well, I look up federal tax rates and it's like, no, it's like 15%, right? Like, no, no, no. If you're selling at 3 million, taking all 3 million, guess what? You're in a higher tax bracket, even though your income before you sold it was like 50 grand or 70 grand or 100 grand, right? It pushes you in the higher bracket, right? So like, oh, I didn't, I didn't count for that, right? So just, yeah. Make sure you check with your CPA, but that's generally how that works, Susan. Does that make sense? I think so. I'd have to work some numbers, but yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And we have a DST calculator too to help you with that. And so you, you can email us, uh, brett at capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and we can get you connected there. 
Now, Susan, did I answer the other question clearly as well about, are you clear about how that it's, it's almost like its own entity? It is its own entity and therefore it's, it's operating or anyone else have questions on that. It's operating in a kind of a tax neutral state because it owes you, let's say 8%. It has trustee fees, that's, that's my company. It has uh, financial advising fees. So it's able to ex expense those things in a given year. It's also able to, um, even if it hasn't paid you out, this is the cool thing, right? Even if you haven't received it, it's able to expense that and accrue it forward. The other thing is, well, what if it goes above and beyond that? The gains go so high. Well, this is part of why the trusteeship is out of Nevada. So it's very, very um, tax efficient at the state level, okay? So that's an advantageous way for anyone who's listening as well. But Pierce or Rebecca or Susan, any questions on that? What is the, can you go over what the, the fees are? You, you mentioned that there's trust fees and then you also mentioned that you have some fees. How does that work? Absolutely. So uh, there's kind of like three sets of fees. The first one is a one-time fee paid to the uh, a business partner who's the tax attorney that covers lifetime audit defense. And it's generally about 1.5% of the gross sales price. Okay. If you get over a million, then it would be 1.25. But let's just keep it simple. Let's say it's a million dollar deal that you're selling and the gross sales price is 1 million. It'd be 15,000 at closing one time. Okay. So that's done. Now let's imagine a million hits the account. You had debt, you had all this other stuff. You had commissions to pay realtors or M&A advisors or, you know, Kraken uh, fees or Coinbase freeze, whatever. Right. And a million hits the account. Then it's a, it's no greater than about 2% per year, depending on how and where you invest the funds. Now, if it goes higher, you get a little bit of a break, right? So looking at about 20,000 a year that the trust, the trust is paying. So all of this is out of the trust or the closing, the close, you know, the, uh, the net proceeds, right? So now hopefully the trust is going to out earn those fees and get you a return. That's why our minimum is $1 million net proceeds, $1 million gain, right? So like on a $3 million sale, if you had a million dollars of, of, of tax, we always say you could pay that fee to the government, that 1 million, or you can roll all of it into the trust and out earn the fees moving forward. Now there's a miscellaneous fees of tax returns, of uh, an accounting, accounting uh, uh, report fee and a bank fee. Those are about 3000 a year. But here's the other thing. Remember how it's a business entity? It's able to expense those at the trust level and therefore it makes it at, act as a, in a tax neutral environment. Therefore, it's just growing tax deferred. Does that make sense, Susan? And you're on mute there. If you unmute yourself, I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to like sit down and like work through some numbers to really understand it. Um, so like, so let's say like there's stocks and bonds and all that kind of stuff. I mean, do I have like, let's suppose I wanted to buy a bunch of stocks mm -hmm. and it's purchased through the trust fund. Do I have to like call up somebody and say, buy this for me? Or do I have access to my own stock account that I can direct myself? It's a great question. And the answer is it's a team effort with me, the trustee, and then you as the as the uh, the note hold, the secured lender. OK, and this is one of the again, the new skills you'll learn is you're taking the ownership hat off and you're putting the lender hat on. Um, but the easiest way to think about it is if you go buy a piece of property, they need fire insurance. They like you to pay the rent on time. Right. It's an investment property. They want to make sure the tenant is a, cre a credit worthy tenant. They want to see income and expenses statement. And if you're not following those rules, the lender can foreclose on you. So you have all the rights and protections of a lender, which also means you have all approval of all of the investments as a secured lender. Now, does that mean you get you'll get um, there'll be dual access to the accounts? Yeah, you'll have dual access to see the accounts, to see the statements, to review everything. Uh, we go over these in detail with you, but you must approve all investments. So investments do not move, uh, you know, fees do not move without your approval. So it's a dual, it's a dual thing, but it's not unlike like a qualified intermediary, unlike an IRA custodian, right? There's, that's our role at Capital Gains Tax Solutions. And it's important to understand this, that you don't own the trust, you're lending the funds to the trust. This is why it works, right? Because if you just sold it to yourself, then it's taxable. But there's got to be a third party unrelated trustee. That's our company. 
Now these trusts are set up just for you, Susan, and your family. So they're never commingled with anyone other trusts. They're never commingled in my personal accounts or my business accounts. These are single entity business trusts that only does business with your family, which you must approve, okay? Third party banks, third party uh, financial advisors. This is part of the balance of powers too. There's three parties, trustee, financial advisor, DST legal team, and then you're the you're the you're the uh, note holder, right? You're the secured lender. But I always say it's like riding a bike. You've never rode this bike before, right? Likely, and so for the first time, it's going to be a little bit wobbly. But you're like, okay, but there's that million dollars of tax that I'm delaying. I'm delaying. I'm delaying. And as you get to know us, as we build build the the know, like, and trust, and as the investments are made, and you see the cash flow in the statements, you're like, oh, this is great. I got like an executive team. I got. Brett is an ex as a commercial real estate expert. I have the financial advisor and expert and Jake Miller, who's, who's, who's on the call here too. I've got the tax team who's, who's done this, the legal part. And you also work with your CPAs and your people as well. And you might even have someone who wants to review the allocation, right? We oftentimes have people who have other financial advisors that want to review the allocation. They're happy to do that. We're happy to work as a team. Does that make sense, Susan? And you're on mute again. If you could unmute yourself that we could hear you. Uh, sort of, but it, it sounds to me almost like you're also acting as a portfolio manager um, uh, as opposed to like allowing me to self-direct my own cannot invest. Cannot self-direct. I'll be very clear. You cannot. Why can't you self-direct on like a stock portfolio, uh, you know, day-to-day -day trade, Vanguard, and just Robin Hood, do it all yourself? Because it crosses the line, unfortunately, that we believe if the IRS were to review it, that you are you are you are too close to making every decision unilaterally. Okay, so when you're an owner, you can walk into the bank and be like, "Hey, I own the million dollars. Just give me all the money." Unilaterally, you sign, you got the money. Okay, if you were able to do that without without um, with no with no block, you know, nothing to block you with the trust, it'd be taxable. Okay, it'd be taxable. This is why. So it takes dual approval. So that means investments and you might have some ideas hey here's some ideas i've got some great stock picks i got some things what do you what do you think brett what do you think financial advisor also uh, i i forgot to mention in the very beginning you fill out what's called a risk tolerance questionnaire just like you would if you walked into a financial advising's office so everything is mathematical we're looking at this thing and we're scoring based upon your risk and if you're married your husband's risk and we're scoring this and that determines it's like the constitution for how and where the funds are invested and so we all look at that and say hey susan Financial advisor, trustee, Brett, here, here's what was stated in the very beginning. Can you adjust that along the way? Yes. And based upon that, let's invest the funds, right? But it's not like I, it's not like nothing holds you back. I have to be able to review that and approve that with you. Now, I'm a friendly trustee. I don't want anything that's, um, that you don't want. But also, if you said, hey, I want to put all of it, you know, all of it into Apple stock, all $3 million. I'm gonna be like, well, Susan, like your risk tolerance says you want some diversification here, right? So uh, why don't you, why don't we reassess that? Or how about we just pay you back the three million, and then you go go put it all into Apple stock? Does that make sense? We wanna we wanna stay within the guidelines of legality and investments and um, and work as a team to make it work. Does that make sense, Susan? Mm hmm. So, for instance, like right now, I subscribe to certain uh, investment newsletters, and I usually invest according to those investment newsletters. Can I give you a list and say, well, these are the ones that they say are really good right now that we should be buying. Absolutely. You, okay. You're, you're like the, you're the CEO and I'm kind of like the COO and then Jake Muller who's on here, he's like the CFO. Right. And it's like, we're walking into the boardroom and we've, Susan's got to make the final decision, right? She's got to get the approval. Now I've also got to get the approval, right? I actually made this analogy. I heard that Mark Zuckerberg owns 95% of his company, but there's other like big executives that they can't just make unilateral decisions. They have a board that have to agree to this, right? And that's kind of the constraints we're, we're up against. We got to follow the guidelines so that you're not making unilateral decisions. We're presenting opportunities. You're presenting opportunities. The meeting of the minds gets together and we find out if it fits the risk tolerance questionnaire and then we move forward. But the answer is absolutely, you can bring great stock picks, great ideas, great great newsletters that you work with, and let's all make a great decision for Susan, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, Brett. I think there's other people with their hands up, so. Sure. Brett, can you change that risk tolerance questionnaire? 
Yes, you're never set in stone, right? So we can, we can adjust that. I had clients in COVID-19, they were so afraid of the stock market and the real estate market, and I can't blame them. We sat for months in the bank and I was encouraging them. I was like, hey, there's some opportunities that we can get some steals. And emotionally, they just weren't there. And I'm like, I'm not gonna press you, but we can buy at a discount. We literally had a client, he sold us a $7.6 million deal in Georgia. We saved his failed 1031 exchange. He had millions sitting in the bank. And I'm like, it cost him probably like a million and a half dollars because we could have bought at the bottom. It was perfect. Everything crashed and he didn't do it and he's kicking himself, but it's, but he had the final decision, right? And, and, um, we have to agree, right? So, and if I didn't have to agree, guess what? It's taxable. The whole thing is, is not, is not, is not legit. So does that make sense, Pierce? Makes perfect sense. I think Nico had a question too. And uh, she, she raised her hand. And Nico, you want to unmute yourself there? Oh, yeah. Here I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. How are you? Okay. So I was just going to say I'm one of Brett's clients. Um, and I'll, I'll just, just in answer to your question, I actually had my money sitting there because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. Nobody was pressuring me. Nobody was saying, hey, do this. They gave me recommendations. I kind of looked it over. I said, yes, yes. Um, I got on the phone just a couple days ago with the financial advisor and he went through what he recommended and why he said, you know, they all said, if you have other recommendations, let us know, we'll do what you want. Um, and I, so, so from my standpoint, I'm, I feel kind of fully in control of, of where my money is going. Um, and the other aspect is, I don't know, you didn't really touch on this, but basically you've given me a note that says you you're supposed to pay me a certain percentage. And if you make some crazy, you know, nothing but Bitcoin and it tumbles, the trust is still kind of on the hook to pay us that note. That's why it has to be protected is kind of my understanding is, is you can't do something that will make it go down to the point where it can't be paid back according to the note terms. Am I right? You nailed it, Nico. And thank you so much for sharing. And Nico is a great client of mine. And, and uh, I, this is her first time on, on the mastermind and I'm excited to have her on. She's fantastic. She's a, uh, she's a real estate expert out of the Bay area. She does like a pre she does like 10 appraisals a day. She's uh, really sophisticated and smart in all things like rental properties. And she had to learn about the deferred sales trust for the first time. And maybe we're running out of time, but maybe next week, Nico, if you can come back and you can maybe share your story, that'd be really powerful, but it's exactly right. We didn't press her, pressure Nico, right? And we just gave some ideas. She gave some ideas and we we slowly invest it as it as it made sense and then yes exactly right. part of my role as the trustee in our company it's it's we own the trust and we owe you all the money back so we have to be like a fiduciary right we have to look at this and make prudent investments to pay that back and so we don't want anyone to jump off a cliff and again but if nico wanted to jump off the cliff can we amend the note and pay her back her money and have her pay her tax and have her go do that these are always people are always thinking worst case scenarios right they're like how can I trust that this is going to be in my best interest or this thing is legal or that I'm not going to get blocked? And all I can say is it takes knowing, liking and trusting us. And Susan, maybe I can connect you and Nico offline and you can talk with her more and learning, learning that we're, we're, we're team, we're here, we're all in this together. Right. And, and we're, uh, we're, we're here, we're, we're in it to win it together, but also not to step on a legal landmine or a financial landmine. And so, uh, thank you, Nico. Thank you for sharing. Any other thoughts on that, Nico? Sorry, hold on. Let me unmute me. Uh, no, but yeah, I'm, I mean, I guess I'm more than happy to share. I'm, I'm not, unfortunately, one of the grandiose Bitcoin people. I mean, I, I basically had a Bay Area asset I sold that I bought for 300 and sold for like one seven, and just wanted to get out of the Bay Area market for rentals. Um, and didn't know what to do with the money and was trying to do a 1031 exchange, but felt pressured by the time. And so I sat, you know, I spent months agonizing over what I was going to do and this is what I ended up doing. So, um, yeah, I went through all the same questions and thoughts and, you know, how could I keep control of it? Where's my money going? What's going to happen to it, et cetera, et cetera, because it was kind of a, a big nest egg for me on an asset that I've owned for 20 years. And so far, are we five star, Nico? Five star review? Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, I have one question I need to get answered from you. I sent you an email. So, um, and that's just about doing some multifamily stuff. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, we're out of time now. I want to thank everyone for attending. I want to encourage everybody to bring a guest next week. 
I want to thank, of course, Nico, Michael Williams, Roman, Adam, Rebecca, Susan, and Pierce, Jake Miller, who was on before. If you have any questions at all, you can go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com and you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me or one of my team members, and we can go through this. Remember, our, our minimum is $1 million net proceeds, $1 million game, unless you have two properties or, or two you know, uh, to uh, uh, a cryptocurrency worth 500 and, and something else worth 500 to combine together. But uh, I hope, hopefully you, you feel encouraged today and more confident about the Deferred Sales Trust. And Pierce, for people who want to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can call me on my cell directly at 949-749-2990. And I'll drop that in the chat as well. And you can also send me an email at Pierce at kingdomluxuryrealty.com. Awesome. Thanks, Pierce. And we'll see everybody next week. And 